everybody, Ben F. The Bonin Podcast, and we've got an extra special and very, very cool unbox and review for you today. We've got an unreleased team from Gribo Games. We are going to be looking at this box of delights, which is some of the pre-release gear for the Snoo Snoog team. Now, we've got the Halfling set. But you know how Gribo Games works. They are going to be using this and probably having positionals so that you can flex into different teams. We've got the Halfling version here. Now, this team, Snoo Snoog. If you've ever watched Futurama, you'll know exactly the theme. Now, the guys at Gribo Games love Futurama. We saw it with the Dwarf team, and now we are seeing it with a stunty Amazonian team, and it is something very special. So we are going to delve into the models and have a look right now. Okay, so we're going to kick off with some of the models. Now, I've been able to figure out what some of these are um, when it comes to catchers and hefties. But the cool thing is, and this is what I mean about the Gribo Games models, we've seen it with some of their other teams. Their models are absolutely chock full of detail. And because of that, there are ways for you to kind of identify certain things to make different positionals in there. But like I said, we've got the halfling set up, so I'm pretty sure I know what the hefties are, pretty sure I know what the catchers are, which means everybody else is a line person. So design wise, this team here is absolutely all about that Amazon vibe. And when I say Amazon, I mean the trope. And it's very much inspired by um, by Fry's adventures in Futurama. So let's see if we can get a nice bit of detail on here. So these models look like they've been made in Grebonite, which is the next generation production technique that Grebo have been using. They did a superb job moving over to Greeblood. Then they fixed a lot of ring issues with Greeblood HD, and then they've turned it up an extra notch here. And if you've seen any of our other review videos of some of the Grebonite stuff they've been doing, this is basically the difference between A and A+. Okay, if you're watching an HD TV versus a 4K TV, and I think, I'm hoping you can pick that up on the camera itself. So, these models have got the supports underneath, but other than that, they are, there's no mold lines, there's no glue lines, there's no bits you'll have to fill in with green stuff. There is just design and quality execution. So the models here, you're going to have a few trope bits. There's going to be lots of um, bits of cloth, lots of rope, lots of brilliant, brilliant facial features. There's so much character here and there's a ton of like wildlife in these models as well. So this Amazon halfling here has got long braided hair and you've got, uh, what I, what's, I don't know, what is that? A fox or a raccoon on their shoulders? Now, the models are all this full of detail and they are quite small because they are supposed to be halflings. They're supposed to be size two. So this is our first model and we're gonna compare it to a Games Workshop Goblin. And this is from the Black Orc team. And when you compare them size wise, actually they are about the same size. The halflings here may be a little bit smaller, but as we move on, you can see that some of the models are a bit smaller and some of them are a bit larger. And the cool thing is here is that that's gonna size up really well. So you can use this as knoblars, you can use these as snotlings. And that I think is where you might see uh, Gribo knock it out of the park. But design and execution, just to begin with already really good so that's one of our line women we're gonna go through and have a look at a load of these models because i just want to show off the sculpting and the detail because it's just they are there's so much character in these models as soon as i saw uh the pre-production stuff from lorenzo i was just absolutely smitten there's just so much character i cannot wait to paint these because there's just so much fun right so we've got this dudette here we've got twin spikes and just a pig head as a helmet as a cloak now this is really interesting and this is what i mean about you will be able to find a way to use certain models here as other positionals this just looks like a berserker to me or an ulf were in a proxy size wise definitely not strength four definitely is strength two it definitely bigger than a strength one player but there you can see that most of these models are going to size up pretty nicely with uh, the games workshop goblins which is where you want them to be. Maybe a little bit smaller, but actually, if you think about it, goblins, armor 8+, plus, halflings, armor 6+, plus. definitely more armor on this guy than there is on this gal. So that's another one of the linos. Let's bring the rest of our line women to have a look at. 
because each one of these sculpts is just beautifully executed. I mean, the skin is just... They've done a great job of actually capturing mobility, like motion in the model and natural kind of features, which I think is really cool, along with just an absolutely wicked amount of detail. The hat there, you can see the teeth on the skull cap that she's got. You've got all the feathers, all the kind of fur effect. You've got the brilliant detail there on the fur on the back, which is really nicely contrasted with the hair uh, texture, which is definitely something to worth mentioning because actually when you are making detail, when you are making things look different like this, it can be hard to pull off. But one thing we are going to do here is use this curved flat area of the hair here to demonstrate the complete lack of rings so when you produce models you get mold lines or you get flash or if you produce them in 3d printed you get supports and then you probably get rings because of the way they're made no rings here there are less rings here than in sauron's pocket this is this is just next level i think is the best way to describe it it is next generation it's just this is like the t90 to the t55s kicking around and again you can see just absolute quality detail sculpting getting that just natural kind of effect of what a tiny angry blood bowl player would look like they've done a really good job mixing in different kind of hairstyles as well it just gives a very a very natural effect to the quality of this team to the design aspects of this team it's just full of different people they've got different hairstyles different body sizes and it just kind of makes sense even though they're all about the same height which is where you want them to be you know you've got little flasks little boots little helmets with the ram horns it's just awesome like every one of these models is a treat and that's not something you get all the time when it comes to model kits there's normally a couple of models you really like that's just how it works every single model in this kit you could be like hey i'll paint that up that'll be great fun to paint i can add some character to that look at this this one here probably just a line woman but you've got the bounding features the animated effect there is absolutely perfect and it mirrors up beautifully to the other model that is part of this model which is this tiny rabbit and it's just it's just of a design that you wouldn't expect to see i didn't expect to see it and it's just a really cool way it really captures like the feral vibe that this team's going with so those are a few of the line women that i've pulled out and uh, wanted to have a look at now i've got two models here that have got gloves on now that kind of means to me that they are catchers and we've got just more buckets of detail and character so this is one of the catchers and the catcher has caught a frog so there's gloves for catching right but look at the detail here they all kind of marry up it, it's like they're all kind of power rangers you've got that kind of the rabbit girl is in the similar pose to the rabbit that's bounding the frog is in a crouching pose and the catcher who's caught the frog is in a crouching pose to match the frog but every one of these models you can see and hopefully i'm doing my best to show this off on camera but the the cast is perfect but the detail is just flawless look at the face tell me the last time you saw a model that had that amount of just detail on the face like that 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 level of character in all of these models and a, a tongue sticking out as well which i imagine is kind of tying into the toad thing and that's just come on we've all been there we've all seen get, just go back a couple of years right games workshop bring out blood bowl again the orc team is cool but there's loads of flat areas this is what we're dealing with now faces with different features and different kind of vibes that you can pick out and be like there are different characters so we've got this catcher here that's got a possum or something <laughs> it just looks like a, a disney rat that's like trying to catch food off the table but the amount of detail here is absolutely epic although it does look like this this uh, model has got like a, a blindfold over the eyes which is 
like pretty impressive i don't know maybe oh look at that you've got little cutlery on the shoulder pads look at the detail look at the effort that's gone into adding this stuff you don't need that there's no reason for that to be on the model but this one catcher model has got cutlery on a shoulder pad has got a possum on the other shoulder pad has got goggles and a blindfold and these beautiful gloves this is one catcher one size two catcher we'll do another size comparison here compared to the games workshop goblin but yeah you can see this is a just the, the, the amount of detail packed on this model versus this model this is crayons to Windsor Newton okay and it's just phenomenal so those are what I believe to be the catchers and these are what I reckon are the hefties because they've got these big burly shoulders and big barrels on the back so this looks like basically the remnants of a soup pot or a cauldron on this one and this has just got extra armor on here but this is so cool so this dude has got a turkey underneath her arm just absolutely bounding around with a turkey so i reckon this is uh, one of the hefties for the halfling team but again look just the character in the face they've gone so far as to give these players different facial structures like the jawline of this player is different to the other jawlines of the other players each one of these models has got more character than a forge world star player and that is just incredible you've got turkey you've got a gravy boat here which i think is just an absolutely superb combination you can see a few uh, bits of um not flash but um like support lines underneath here and underneath here and you know what with a bit of a blade you can scrape them away in absolutely no time at all the effort that will take in right first of all if you were to just glue this to a base now and prime it look at all of the deep the face the turkey it, it's all perfect it's all straight away ready to paint but a couple of minutes with a blade or clippers and you'll be able to take away any remnants of support and if you think about the time it takes to build a model that's on a sprue to clip it out to find part 4b that's the other side of the sprue and it's baffling and then to glue the thumb on the dark elf right this is just you don't have the detail that's as like that's as good as this you don't have the dynamism that's as good as this look at that face detail unbelievable Th this is just I, i'm so happy this is just incredible stuff so those are the half blinks we got well, i should tell you what we haven't even had a look at this this last yet so this is the other hefty and again everything i said about facial structure is, is right and and this is it they've done an incredible job here they've they're going with the amazon vibe but it's just a full of different looking people with different mesomorph types different facial structures different hairdos and hairstyles and it's just phenomenal so this player looks like she's got a slightly a slice of pie all right absolutely amazing there is probably a theme here that i'm missing because you've got turkey you've got pie uh, you've got this this big half a cauldron that's forming the armor of this player this is gonna be i tell you what when it comes to painting this you're gonna find more and more and more detail as you go along but I think what has to be called out is first of all all these smooth curved areas there's there's not a ring in sight this is just almost flawless production and the hair the 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 the, 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 the sculpting the texture on the hair is just incredible and the face so much character and just the skin it, it's just absolutely impeccable but come on, the reason you play a halfling team isn't really for the halflings, okay? The halflings are the bread of the sandwich, and the sandwich is filled out with Treeman and comes with a side of star players, right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at the big guys for this team because I just it's the Bonehead podcast. Big guys are what we do. Uh, and after, you know, three weeks of being poorly and kind of eating getting bigger so let's have a look at the levels of detail on this tree man before we even put together the rest of the model and check out the the, the, the size of this thing so let's start at the bottom and work our way up you've got pots you've got pans we've got this kind of um mushroom effect here and and <laughs> we'll dive straight into it there is 
a beautifully detailed squirrel chilling out inside the moor of this tree map and you can see it that model itself is just beautifully sculpted you can see all of his action you did the Oh, I'm going to say it, this is going to be very uh, Keith Lemon, but the story of this model, what's the story? What's the message? It, clearly, he's just running around, he's absolutely terrified. He was chilling out in there, he's hiding his acorns, and now this entire tree is animated. But it's it's a collection of things. So you've got the extra bits, you've got the ropes, you've got the... I don't know, is that cheese? Probably wheels of cheese, knowing this team, that's just attached to it. You've got a squirrel up here, chilling out in the tree as well. And there's just an outrageous amount of detail. And, you know, there's a couple of pieces on this. You've got more mushrooms. You've got more vines. It's insane. Let's let's just pop that on there so we can get the vibe of the finished model. Oh, it's just amazing. So this is one of the two Treemen. And this is the second Treeman. And we're being spoiled here, guys. This one's in four pieces. Imagine that. Right, look at the detail here. Uh, just, I love the design they've gone with these tree men. It's not just an ordinary tree. This is kind of like a gnarly swamp tree. And there's so much detail on there. Like they've not gone with, you know, vanilla trees or that Ent vibe. This is similar in kind of uh, chunkability to the Games Workshop ones. They're shorter tree men. And it works brilliantly. These, these kind of got Fen Beast vibes from the old school Warhammer kind of era. Like, this is going to take a beautiful bit of, like, inside spirit glow. But, I mean, we're just going to show off the quality casting here. Look at the detail on all these leaves. This has been perfectly put together. You can see a few bits of cleanup are going to be needed. And this is this is it. Like, with these models, we are, like, pointing out the few bits of work you're going to have to do. Like, oh, there's a bit of flash. Oh, there's a couple of supports. Oh, here's a model here. It's an entire tree man. And there are three tiny supports on it. That is all. That is outrageous, and I'm I'm here for it. But we can see that this dude's got like cheese stored in him as well. Uh, I don't know if I would store my cheese in a tree, but actually, if you think about it, the the Amazon vibe here, they're they're kind of like they're very close with the animals. They're doing what the animals do. The frog dude is frogging, you know. The rabbit dude is rabbiting. So actually, storing food in a tree when you've got squirrels, it makes a lot of sense. But we've got the other half of the cauldron there from the hefty's armor. You've got all, you've got like a little bit of ham and leg and stuff. All the food is being stored on the tree here. But my favorite thing is this little piece that attaches. Is it, is it, was a crow? I think that's a crow. I'm not up to date with my Grebo Games birds, but that looks like a crow. And that just fits in the back here of the arm and just adds an extra beautiful element there of character you've got the the hog's head there is i think that is that is, is that a shoulder pad yeah just as the shoulder pad which is amazingly cool and you've got these two arms where you've got all the rest of the detail that you need all the vines and it really is just a game of spot the details so we've got cutlery sticking out there you've got more mushrooms you know we've got the other cauldron and that hands bursting through pieces of it so the cauldron is forming a gauntlet it's just amazing right so we really need to do a scale test don't we for these trees so uh let's grab what have i got what have i got in this box of goodies here we've got a games workshop ogre so this is an ogre from the dungeon ball set and i am going to zoom out ever so slightly because we've zoomed in quite a long way for the halflings and let's get that on camera there we go so we have one tree man versus one dungeon bowl ogre and the tree man is bigger than the games workshop ogre from a height point of view but when it comes to mass and bear in mind that i haven't glued the extra arms on yet these trees are, are plenty big enough to represent the tree now the good thing about this uh, now you know me i've got tree men that are like this big because big guys are what i'm all about when it comes to blood bowl but actually when it comes to playability you've got this beautiful amount of detail in a pretty chunky little um package and when i say chunky little package like it's bigger than an ogre right it's absolutely representative of the size and when we bring in the other tree man even though he's not he's still taller but look at the mass like this is absolutely massive compared to the ogre but pretty much still fits in that 32 to 40 mil base area, which is what is probably the most important thing when it comes to Blood Bowl. And you guys know this on the channel. I'm terrible at this because I'm like, nah, it fits inside a square with one leg. That'll be fine. This has been designed 
to be easy to paint have all the stretch goals there if you want to go and use osl use your shading and do everything you want to do but also ultimately it's been designed to fit on a blood bowl pitch this is form and function in a beautiful beautiful package and by the way it's the nicest casting and miniature production that i have genuinely ever seen and there you have it snoo snoog halfling team from grebo games and I, I it's really difficult not to get hung up on the production here we're going to start by just talking about the design and the execution of the models you've got the artwork we know the vibe it's going on that we've got a halfling version of the amazons from futurama basically right that's the design aspect executed perfectly right 10 stars out of five they have knocked out the park the design is brilliant every single line halfling that is smaller than a games workshop goblin has got more character than a games workshop star player each and every one of these players is an absolute work of art and there is a ton we didn't show off all of the dudes because there's so many dudes and there's some cool extras as well like uh, a hog being roasted and just more players i didn't know if we got any i don't think we got any star players in there but they're just there's just a ton of these little halflings the quality of design is just phenomenal each and every one of these players beautifully done and then you've got the Grebonite, and I'm assuming this team is going to be produced in this Grebonite. And let me tell you, I, with, without any hyperbole, this is the best quality model, like produced stuff ever. Like, I have never come across anything that is just more ready to go. It is genuinely like somebody rubbed a lamp and wished this model into existence. There are a few support lines. That's it. I cannot stress how a plus this is i was absolutely blown away when the chaos dwarf team land when the dwarf team landed i was just like this is amazing they have made it even better and i i i'm just at a loss now because i didn't think they could get better and they have the models are denser and crisper and clearer and it makes me want to cry with joy so snoo snoog at least a halfling team knowing grebo games there's probably going to be a few different ways to put the teams together insanely fun so much character i don't have the star players I don't, there's got to be a third tree there's always a third tree right haven't seen that just super excited to see the rest of the models land and i cannot wait to start seeing these on the pitch because it's just awesome anyway thanks very much for watching we'll be back soon with more blah blah content happy blocking Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to help support the channel even further, please like and subscribe or come join us on our Patreon. We have early access to content. We get loads of feedback from you guys and we try and do competitions as much as we can. Or you can get yourself some Bonehead Podcast merch on our Spreadshirt site. So if you want to support a team, especially for the Bonehead Championship, you can pick up a shirt, a mug, things like that. It all helps support the channel and we really appreciate it. Anyway, links below. Thank you very much. Happy blocking.